What's up guys? Welcome back to Coffee and Van Chats. Uh, you're probably wondering where the hell I am currently. I am in Arkansas. I'm camping and I will be uploading a vlog on that here shortly. But first, I wanted you guys to know about this week's guest and that is Iman Lucas. He has been given the title of Kermes King and we chat about chasing the world tour dream, living in Europe and racing over in the US. So please sit back, relax and enjoy. And just for fair warning, there are some cutouts and there are some dropouts, but please bear with us because it was really hard to edit and it kind of messed up the flow. So I decided not to even cut that stuff out. Leave it in there and make it authentic. Hey guys, welcome back to Coffee and Van Chats. Uh, this is John and I'm here with Iman Lucas, who is American. I know everybody thinks that he might be European, being that he can speak Dutch now. But uh, yeah, welcome welcome to the channel, Iman. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super stoked. Just wrapping up some cleaning in the kitchen, but we're going to talk yeah, bikes yeah. and stories and Sweet. we're going to have a good time. Cool, man. So we we all know you because of your past with like Estella's and then Specialized Rocket Espresso. Like, tell us a bit of some war stories, riding for them and and, and riding in the states. Yeah, so uh, you know, I kind of started out racing uh, with Estella's in 2016. Uh, I got the contract super super late in 2015. I think it was like in November. I had a phone call with uh, the management. Um, and one of the riders, one of the captains on the team I ended up, I wanted to ride for the road team because I had a split squad. Uh, and I was pretty pissed off, actually, to be honest with you, that I got oh, signed really? to their crit. Oh, yeah, I was pissed I got signed to their crit team. I was so oh, mad. Wow. And see, but that's kind of like, old school, isn't it? Like, I guess, like, United Healthcare did that, but they don't really do that much anymore right now. No, it's either, like, you're just going to race, like, the PRT calendar and, like, roadies will do crits and crit guys will do road races. Yeah. But like they were one of the last teams that had like a split real squad. And so, uh, yeah, I got signed in like November of 2015 and I was almost going to quit. I was like, that was like almost like it for me because I didn't have anything and I got burnt hard from IRT the previous year. And I was like, dude, fuck American bike racing. Like I just want to surf. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I just want to surf sure. and be a firefighter. Uh, so long story short, like, I don't forget who it was. I think it was, um, uh, um, I, I'll, it'll come to me, but he hooked it up. He made a phone call, got on the team, signed my contract. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm racing crits. Like the last yeah. four years I've been in Europe racing on the national team, doing all these European road races. Like I want to do that. But so I got on the team and it was, it was a, a life changing, life changing experience for the better. Um, if you think about it, a criterium was the last hour and a half of a road race. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a finisher, like I am, or someone that can be an asset in the final, like you have to know how to ride a final to be an asset in the final. For sure. And so for the whole year, pretty much I practiced the last hour and a half. And so I got really, really good at, yeah, just the finals. And, you know, found myself winning. We, you know, we won Athens Twilight with Ryan Aitchinson. Uh, I think we, we won a... Uh, you know, we won three or four stages of America's Dairylands. We won a stage of Gateway. We won a we won we won a stage of everything when we went there. Yeah. With uh, with with Aldo, Brandon, Monk, Clay, and um, Jake. Not Jake. Uh, Ian Keo, the youngest Keo brother. He was oh, also yeah, on the Crit yeah, Squad. Yeah. That's cool. uh, Jake Silverberg was on the team. But man, I have to say, like one of my craziest experiences was actually Athens at Speed Week. Yeah, uh, because I'd never, never heard of it, never been there, never, never done any of these races. They're all the first time doing all these crits. That's a wild. And so you race. know, I, 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 yeah. I grew up hearing about it, and that we actually won every stage in the ones we didn't win. The two we didn't win, we were second. So I won the first day. Aldo won the second day. We were, we were second the next day. Ryan won uh, Athens. Uh, Aldo won the next, it was crazy, but we were, we were just lapping up like motorcycles, man. It was unbelievable yeah. at Athens. And so like this, the atmosphere 
for people who don't know Athens Twilight, it's it's a college criterium in this middle of Georgia. Where is it? It's in um, it's in Athens. Like I mean, yeah, it's it in is, Athens. It is, like about. But what college is it? What college is it? Oh, it's University of Georgia. I mean, it's yeah. like so you have like a hundred thousand kids drunk out of their mind, ten yeah. rows deep the whole course. Everyone's blacked out. Like the, everyone's fit as a fiddle from racing the whole year. Oh yeah. And uh, I remember, you know, it was the Germans were there. Uh, actually, my the Maloya my, push bikers. The Maloya yeah. push bikers with Stephen Schu- uh, Stephen Schaefer, who I actually yeah, was yeah. racing on Rocket Espresso with. And those guys were just riding like motorcycles. Stefan, you know, won a stage the, the next night. Um, but yeah, we, we, I lapped up in a breakaway of, of 10 guys with Ryan. And then Ryan actually ended up doing a second lap with, oh, uh, with three guys. One guy from Hink Cappy and another Maloya push biker who was in the previous – excuse me. Sorry. You, uh, you're good. I'll cut the, that was, out. Was, actually, I'll leave that in. No, yeah, leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> was uh was in the first breakaway and uh, i remember all those is screaming at us to get ryan back from the second lap to the front yeah and then it was because aldo was going to make sure ryan was okay but aldo needed to save his matches so we were the ones that were just like me and clay and monk i think ian was you know he was a first year so he did his work early and he was just you know, a little, little in the box, little, but for sure. I remember Clay, Clay, Brandon, and I going into like it was like we needed to last till three to go, because I mean there's only like three or two people that Brian needed to beat, and yeah. so Aldo is as strong as six guys, uh, big old Slovenian guy, and yeah. I remember just well, taking the bottom turn in Athens with coming into three to go, and it was this tunnel vision and black noise. And I actually like, I ripped my shoe apart because I was riding the barrier so close. I don't know how I didn't crash, but I, yeah. I bounced off the barriers like <laughs> this. Yeah. And, and then I remember, eject, you know, I swung, swung right because we were riding the left side trying to, you know, the wind. And um, yeah, it was, it was a trip. And then I don't know if I even finished the race. <laughs> I must have finished the I must have finished the race because I started the next day, but uh, yeah, we we ended up winning, and wow, uh, man, that's insane. it was I mean just to, just to do an iconic race like that your first year never hearing about never doing the race only hearing about it and winning in that kind of fashion was well especially winning that race you immediately become a celebrity not only in Athens but kind of for the rest of the week at Speed Week like I mean oh for sure. You, you, the, the team and everything, you're a legend at that moment. Oh, I mean, so any yeah. bar you walk into that night, free drinks is probably happening. Oh, you're going, we part. And well, before, <laughs> because there was like, it's like two races and off night, two races and off night. And then the last race. And there was like a party that Frankie Andrea was having with like the organizers, organi- yeah. organization. And we like got invited and like we, there were like these chicks that were there and like we ended up hanging out with these chicks that were part of the sorority and like we were like, well, oh, we're yeah. trying to rage. And so like that night, like we raged. I don't think yep. we went to sleep till like 3.30 the night before Athens. Oh like, man. That was just like go to sleep at four, wake up at noon, do a coffee ride, go back to sleep, wake up for the race. That was the whole fucking week. That's nuts, dude. And like I said, we won, we won three out of the five nights. And when yeah. we weren't winning, we were like on the podium. So I think 2016 Speed Week was was pretty pretty gnarly. We were shooting Roman candles at each other in the motel parking Jesus. lots. Like <laughs> we were just loose, bro, loose. Just straight straight lunatics, and then winning bike races, man. So if you're wondering, I guess Iman is literally spending his prize money on Roman candles. Um, yeah, but I think we won so much prize money that that week. We created, we I paid my bills for like two months. <laughs> that's that's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, so you you left America, man. Like you packed up. You yeah. were it's, were tired of the racing scene. I feel like, especially being a bigger dude and and dealing with USA Cycling, like being a part of USA Cycling and just the U.S. political racing format and trying to crack into programs like. I, I know that can be difficult and I can only imagine what you went through being a part of a program, a development program 
and then kind of starting to see your your buddies start to either go to the world tour or pro continental on American teams. And you're like, well, Hey, what about me? So what, what, what motivated you? What pushed you? Because we all, we all hear it. Hey, we should go to Europe. You know, if you really want to do it, go to Europe, but what actually pushed you over that barrier? Um, well then again, like I, I then I raced another season in the States with crit life and that was like a mm-hmm. diluted version of the settlers. Cause we wanted to stay together. Yeah, yeah. And that just kind of like burned out. But I was like, I'm not when I left the USA cycling program, I was just starting I was I played catch up my whole career until now. And I, cause I started so late. And so I just yeah. didn't have that extra little bit that helped me in the final, you know? Yeah. And so uh, you know, I, I had unfinished business. I knew I was good enough, obviously. Yeah, but I, I just didn't have the time to prove it. And so I always knew like, okay, like, like my national time, excuse me, my national team trips are done. Like I've graduated the program. I've gotten all the help. I mean, I think I had like 17 trips over the years with USA Cycling. And yeah. I'm so grateful for everything they gave me because it wouldn't be possible to have the backbone and knowledge I have now sure. without, without USA Cycling and so many people. Come on, get in the house. And, uh, so I left, I left uh, for London, Crit Life, uh, I'm sorry, Rocket Espresso um, in 2017. And we, we raced in London and the, like the racing scenes finished, you know, come August yeah. uh, in America. And I didn't have a contract. Crit Life was falling apart. There was no more money in the budget. Like, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to Belgium to like try to make it. Like this is my last push. And like through all this during Estellas and Crit Life, I met Lawrence Tindam. And for those who don't know Lawrence Tindam, he's a very seasoned uh, ex-professional now who raced for Rabobank and, you know, top 10, the tour and top 10, the Giro, the Vuelta and one, two Giros with during his career with Menchov and uh, Dumoulin. Oh, he's a legend. Yeah. He's a, he's a legend. And so I'm, I've no, I knew Lawrence from, from those past experiences and Lawrence, you know, trained, he's my training partner and believed in me and saw the, the fire and he, uh, he helped me get back over pretty much. Uh, he, he helped me get in contact with Delta cycling Rotterdam. It's the old Derica team. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, he can get on the team if he brings a sponsor. And Lawrence is like, no, that's bullshit. Like, you're going to sign the kid. And so he, um, he was like, hey, like, you need to win. And that was in 2016. And I think I won, like, seven races in 2016. Uh, two of them were NRC caliber races, and the rest were, like, just kind of bullshit crits. Yeah. One, like, random ass road race. Can you still hear me? Uh, I think I think the mic went down a little bit. Are you connected to Bluetooth? Yeah, hold on. Um, oh, better. I can't see it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's better. All right. Yeah, that's perfect. We're back. We're back. I just turned my connection off. Yeah, anyway, so uh, so Lawrence uh, was a big advocate in that. And he's like, hey, you need to win more. And that was like 2016, like I said. In 2017, I won 16 races in America. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, two or three of them were on my fixed gear bike in Europe. That doesn't really count. Yeah. But still, uh, you know, I won Downers Grove. I won two stages of uh, Dairylands. I won a Gateway Cup. I, I was winning all over the board. So it was kind of surpassing – the American crit scene. Like I, I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and so I went back to Lawrence and I was like, yo, like I'm, I've, I've won double the races. Like they said, win more races. I won more races. And so he went back to them and he's like, Hey, like the kids won fucking this many races, sign him. And so Delta gambled on me, but I sure wasn't like a hundred percent solidified until like the end of October. For sure. But, but like I said, I left London <laughs> and went, I took the train to Belgium with my suitcase and 300 bucks and was like, I need to win more. Like I, that's when I won my first, my, like the next week I won my first elite criteria or elite Kermesse in Belgium. And it's kind of ironic because now I live in the town where I won that, that yeah. race. 
and uh, and it didn't. I didn't get to race it in 2018 or yeah, 2018 because I was racing for Delta and it didn't happen. But then again, I it happened last year and I won it again, so I won it two years in a row. Oh man! So it's a, a really special race for me, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got into Europe, to Europe with a lot of help from Lawrence Sandam. And, you know, the, the arsenal coming with Lawrence is now Nikki Terpstra, who I don't really have to introduce Nikki Terpstra. If anyone doesn't you know do who not. he is, you should, mean, you, should, you should quit the sport. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> if you're a track racer, you should definitely know Nikki Terpstra. If you're a road cyclist, you should know Nikki Terpstra. Like, I mean, the, the guy's a legend. I mean, He's phenom- straight uh, phenomenal. I mean, uh, the guy can ride a Madison blindfolded on the smallest gear possible he's just so smooth and, and lap the field <laughs> and lap the field a few times blindfolded. Yeah. yeah yeah um and so uh yeah just you know being associated with lawrence and then you know lawrence is not only a mentor lawrence really became a father figure because i lived with lawrence when i was racing for delta in yeah, holland yeah. when i totally left and went continental in europe and that was just a fucking shell shock man that was like oh this is insane like you know, we were racing yeah. Quick Step and we were racing Lotto and I was racing World Tour guys. And, you know, the races went from um, uh, like hour and a half, two and a half hour crits and three and a half hour road races to 200K UCI races. Yeah, one day. And, and, yeah. It, and it wasn't that I was, you know, or, you know, Normandy or Tour of Normandy or, you know, Tour of Britannia. Oh, man. And it wasn't that I wasn't able to do it, but, or I didn't train, but I wasn't training for that the last prior two years. I was, you know, yeah. I, I could ride anyone off my wheel for two hours. Yeah. But once, you know, three hours rolled around, I just didn't have that uh, aerobic capacity and muscular endurance. So I really played half of 2018 catching up and I really got my shit rocked. And I'll, you know, Lawrence wasn't not happy, but he was like, fuck, like what's going on? And was, was he like, coaching hey. you at the time? No, he wasn't coaching. I coached <laughs> myself. Uh, I mean, I had a, a coach on the team. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's not that I didn't like him or we didn't like each other, but we just didn't really see eye to eye. Yeah. And um, I coached myself, like, half the season, the later part of the season in 2018. Yeah. But still, like, I uh, – <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Can you hear me? I I can yeah I can hear you can't see you. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to come back. Drive safe. Your microphone is. You're your good. Video. Man. I don't know why your video stopped. Why is drive safe driving mode? Oh, I kicked in safe driving mode. <laughs> oh wait, no, we're oh, good. We're back. We're we're yeah, back. We're back. Um, dang, Zoom is freaking equipped. Yeah, man. Trying to, Can't freaking, trying to keep you protected. Yeah, well, I'm freaking breaking the, ro- breaking the rules, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rule breaker. They should know that. Anyways, yeah, so I, uh, where was I at? Um, Lawrence. If Lawrence 2018, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 2018. So 2018 was a really big dish, shell shock. And I wasn't going to quit after 2018, but. Delta ended up losing his title sponsor and I was in I know, another predicament of my back up against the wall. Yeah. I was like, well, shit, man. Like I had I didn't have the best 2018. I got a few podiums and some criteriums in Holland and got some top twenties and some 1.1s and, you know, made some selective moves that showed that I, you know, I was, I was growing every week after the middle of the year. Yeah. And, and I was trying to, you know, show Lawrence like, Hey, like, I'm, I'm trying, like, I'm not quitting, I'm getting better. Competition races, I was in the top five in the field sprints. Like, those are still 180K races. Yeah. With fucking, you know, crosswind and rain and, you know, Dutch, Dutch racing. It's not easy. It's a lot different than Belgium. It's a lot more yeah. chaotic. It's a lot more, it's faster. It's not as, like, interval-like, but the overall speed is as crazy in the Dutch races. Yeah. Um, but I was getting better and I knew I wasn't ready to call it quits. I knew I still had it in me and I was willing to fight and sacrifice and, you know, still be there. I loved Europe. Uh, I had a family base. I loved Lawrence. I, you know, I was starting to 
call Nikki Uncle Nikki, and I was, now everyone knows me as Papa Lau and Uncle Nikki. Uh, <laughs> Nikki was starting to give me more respect, and you know, I was starting to get in really with the training group, and they were starting to see you know my my change of attitude and ability, and like anything, if it was easy, fucking, it wouldn't be worth it. For sure. But you know, I I, I fucking struggled, and I I just showed fortitude and pushed through, and uh, Delta folded at the end of 2018, and. I knew I wanted to be in Europe and I wanted to stay with Specialized. So I called um, an amateur team in Belgium, ran by Hakeem and Alexander uh, in Flanders, uh, my, my two current bosses. And uh, uh, hey, I, I, it's October 15th. Can I ride for you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sorry, you're breaking out yeah. just a little bit. Start over again. Sorry, you're breaking up. I don't know if we lost you. John. Hey, you back? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right. No, no, no worries. Yeah, you're just breaking up. We can cut it up. Yes. So in a, so in like a 30 minute phone call, like I had a team for next year and I had a salary and I was taken care of and it was bam, it was done. I didn't have to worry anymore. And I mean, those guys knew me from, you know, when I came over two years prior and won that race at Hoose Camp and they knew me when I was racing on the national team and they knew my name from around and they knew that I was racing on the pro level and, you know, with Delta. And so they were for sure excited to have me. For sure. I know I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna dive in too much of 2019, but it was a pretty breakthrough year across the board. I mean, I don't think any American has won 10 Kermesses, let alone over 10 Kermesses. Yeah, I think I think you got crowned Kermes King, right, by Velenes? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fred Dreyer wrote that article uh, in in May's May's uh, May's issue with Velenes, Kermes King, California kid to Kermes King, so. Sweet. Yeah, we'll put that down in the link below so you guys can check that out. Uh, Iman Lucas, Kermes King. So, yeah. so now, now it's 2020. You've, you've won all these Kermeses. I mean, honestly, it looks like not only are you starting to break through, but, but now like you're really starting to make a name for yourself in Europe. So what, how's this whole coronavirus thing hit you? Cause I know for like an athlete like myself, like I had already missed out on the Olympics. I knew 2020 was going to be like, kind of like a, uh, a gravel year or a mountain bike year. I didn't really know. Um, but for you, I mean, this could have been your year to really start cracking it deep into the scene and maybe, maybe getting on the eyes of some of these bigger, bigger teams. So how are, how yeah. are you starting to handle that, man? Um, you're right. It was, it was supposed to be, I'm not going to say anything, you know, because you don't know, but it was supposed to be my year. And at sure. first I, I felt pretty upset and robbed. Yeah. I was like, fuck, like, you know, I'm only getting older. Like that's yeah. facts. I'm only getting older, but also because I started so late, I'm only getting better. Yeah. And okay. I don't, I don't care about old school cycling because old school cycling is, is changing. Like, uh, last year I went to, got the privilege to test at the Mape training facility in May, uh, yeah. kind of an inner circle that's associated with Lawrence was Lawrence's agent, Joel Correa, who runs Corso marketing, sports marketing, one of the biggest marketing, you know, cycling marketers in the world. So Joao has always been in my, in my corner and helped me get established with Mape and he really wanted to see some numbers and Andrea Morelli, the head coach at Mape was like, fuck, this is insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, uh, I'm frustrated that I couldn't show my winner, my progress I made this winner, but I also haven't lost sight. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If not, man, I'm, I'm living the dream. Like every day sure. I wake up and I get paid to ride my bicycle. Yeah. And I might not be racing right now. And who knows, I might not make it to the world tour, but dude, I've raced quick step. I've won races in Europe. I've made it in the biggest magazines that are in the sport. I've made it in full spreads in Belgian newspapers. I, I'm happy. I'm content. You know, That's awesome, you man. always want hear. more. You always want better, more shiny. Like, yeah, I'm a small That's... town kid that loves to surf and ride his bike. Like, 
I live my yeah. dream every, every day. I'm so blessed. And if I make it to the world tour, which I still have ambitions to, great. And I'm, and I'm still going to work my ass off to do it as I'm doing so now. Uh, I've hired Neil Henderson as a coach to target time trial national championships. That's good. That's a uh, good guy I, to have in your corner for the time trial. That's for sure. If any I, of you guys don't I, know Neil, Rohan, Dennis, I, our record holders. I mean, Taylor Finney. Taylor Finney. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, uh, I worked with Neil for two years as an under 23. So and Neil, you know, he, he was like, yo, I only have like a handful of clients right now, but I know, I know what you're capable of. And I know it's one thing you don't have is a rainbow jer- uh, stars and stripes Jersey. And I know you're able to do it. And so I hired Neil back in February. That's awesome. And uh, actually I'm the fittest I've ever been. I mean, I've usually only race and you train a little bit, but you never really train, train. Like after yeah. like March, you don't train. You like rest yeah. and you do some threshold shit, you know? Yeah. And so like to, yeah, to be like factual, like I'm, I'm the fittest I've ever been because I'm actually focusing on everything still, you yeah. know? I'm, I'm, and so it's, it's incredible. Like I'm, you know, I'm doing 420 watts normalized for an hour. I'm doing like 320 watts normalized for six hours. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm rolling. It's incredible. It's so, I, so I'm not, when racing comes back on and when everything gets the green light, I'm just acting like I'm going to show up to that start line and I'm going to kill everybody. Cause that's the yeah. mentality you have to have. You have to, you know, you're either going to be killed or you're going to, you're going to be the killer. No, for sure. And, and that's I, probably and what's made you a champion, man. And I haven't made it this far to be a sucker. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't speak like this often and you know, I don't, not that I don't like to, but yeah, like I'm, uh, you're not going to be a champion unless you don't believe you're a champion and fuck, I'm a champion. For sure. And so I, I, you know, I, I like to be uh, assertive when needed, but I also like, and I've learned over the years, this to shut up and retrain. For sure. Shut up and train, shut up and win. And I think since 2017 to now, I've, I've done a lot of growth as a person and as an athlete and uh, I've showed that. And so I'm just going to keep uh, with that mentality and be humble and be stoked and, you know, I can control what I can control and I can't control what I can't control. So I'm just going to just keep, keep, uh, keep training. I'm going to keep resting. I'm going to keep surfing. I'm going to keep being happy. And, uh, that's my, uh, my approach, man, right now. Keep on keeping on, man. I think, I think that's, what's going to make you uh, a great athlete and I'm definitely going to make you a champion. So for sure. So, I mean, so to kind of wrap up, man, like what are, what are your goals? Like, let's say 2021 now starts and it's a thing and it's happening. What's your goals yeah. for 2021? And, and we can just go ahead and say that 2020 is sayonara just for right now. Um, but what if we're going to go, if, if we're going to go uh, that, uh, that route, 2021, yeah. I'm staying in Europe. And uh, I'm going to win 20 races and go world tour. Sweet, man. No, that's, that's sick, man. I, uh, I mean, that was, my, that, was, that was my goal this year uh, to honestly now that. Hi, can I be let in? I'm here to pick up Marissa. Great, thanks. Sorry. He's a, he's a great guy. I mean, he's literally going to pick up his girlfriend while doing this podcast. <laughs> And Everybody. the best friend hasn't said a word. And the best friend. <laughs> this best friend right here, they're going to start a reality TV show. We're going to start blog. a reality TV show, we said. 100%, <laughs> dude, man. I weird. think you dudes so are insane. funny as hell. Like, We're I, funny I, as I hell, he said. great. I do. <laughs> Stuff's hilarious. So, especially, is it your dad? Or is it Matt's dad or grandfather or somebody? Oh, he, Grandpa? Yeah, he loves some sugar. That oh, guy. yeah, he lo- Grandpa loves some sugar, he says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like, like I picture him as the guy that like smashes the son's Xbox and is just like, what the heck, man? Oh no, yeah, Grandpa's the man. <laughs> yeah, so That's I mean, awesome. I've, I've I've got such a great support network, and and Matt has yeah, actually yeah. been here from the beginning since Day I one. since awesome, I started man. pedaling a bike, and you know he came yeah. with his mom to watch me race Roubaix, and they've been a big support network, and yeah, yeah, yeah man, I'm I'm just focusing on what I can control and what I can't control. It's not my business worrying about, and. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put that energy toward my pedals and the waves and, you know, have some faith and pray and just, just keep living my dream, man. I'm, I'm no, so blessed to even cool. make it this far and uh, turn the lights on and know those lights come on because of a bicycle. What a privilege. 
Yeah, that is for sure. And no, I, I definitely know that feeling. It is, it is a cool life to live. Um, so especially to be living it in Europe and exploring it in Europe, especially with the people that you have in your corner, it's got to be a blessing, man. So that's super cool. Yeah, um, no. So yeah, the next year is going to be the same as this year. It is keep trying to get to the finish line first <laughs> for sure yeah that's this is everybody's goal but yeah man so i'm i'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up and close us out and uh i i really appreciate your time man and uh i know you're a busy dude and i know you've got many of these kind of texts probably and uh, i'm glad that you took mine and uh glad that you can jump on with me man i really appreciate it no i'm stoked stoked john thank you so much and uh you know yeah. it's been also it was it was also cool to follow you guys as your uh, your team pursuit I know, oh, like I said, didn't it, go to plan, but it was, I was rooting for you boys hard, man. It was, it was uh, awesome yeah, yeah. to see you guys kicking ass and trying your best. Like, I can pay my respects to that, man. Well, dude, we were hoping that you were going to come in, man, and squeeze yeah. in, and, and you were just going to be a big unit, and 500, 500, 800 watts all day. Right, right. <laughs> it, it just didn't play out. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. There were some, there were some things, but I, I was trying. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, gave, I gave it a thought. No, dude, that's that's awesome. Well, who knows, man? Paris is 2024. We may line up together one day. You guys you heard it here know. now. You never right? know. You Iman never Lucas know. might come back and decide to ride Team Pursuit with me. Other than that, possible. man. It's possible. Thanks so much for your time. I'm going to let you pick up your girlfriend so you can have dinner and just chill and hang. Awesome. Take it easy. Appreciate Thank it, Thank you so much, John. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.